Should you buy Injustice 2 in 2022? Injustice 2 is the sequel to the original Injustice game way back in 2013 and continues that story from the get-go. It's your usual never-round fighting game with a bunch of cool gameplay changes and of course has a lot of DC characters for everyone to use, but I never really saw Injustice 2 get a lot of attention when it released in 2017 and the attention it did get dwindled fairly quickly after all the DLC characters released, so is Injustice 2 worth it right now in 2022? And yes, it's currently on sale for like £11. So like $15 or something. Let's start with the story with no spoilers and of course there are timestamps so you can skip to the bits you care about. Let's go. Injustice 2 is a direct sequel to the original Injustice but leaves behind the multiverse elements to focus on one timeline of characters which I think really benefits the story. Brainiac is the main villain and decides to invade Earth leaving our cast of heroes with a tough decision to make. Release the tyrannical insane Superman to take on Brainiac or risk the end of the world and to be honest it's quite interesting. I'm not sure if the comics covered this kind of story as I've never really read them, but this was a really cool story. A lot gets to explored with the introduction of Supergirl and the conflict between Batman and Superman remains one of the strongest elements of the Injustice story and never bored me. Injustice 2 really is like a 4 hour ultimate DC film with some interactive fights in between, which is insane since Neverround the studio that got criticised for its meh stories a decade ago somehow pulled off a better story than any of the DC films. And yes, I actually like Zack Snyder's version of the DC characters, but it's undeniable that, that this is the best DC Universe-esque content we've gotten in a long time, and it's simply a blast to play through. Voice acting is pretty great, there's a few lines that are a little cringy, but overall the voice acting is really great and the writing really helps it. Laura Bailey kills it as Supergirl and the name Laura Bailey will come up a lot on this channel over the next week. She's been one busy actor, it's insane. She's played MJ, she's played the uh, main girl from Gears of War and now she's playing bloody Supergirl which is pretty cool. She's been busy mate. But yeah, the writing is really good. Everything flows at a good pace while delivering both great character moments and epic superhero moments like the end of the world plotline and it all blends together really nicely. Superman, Supergirl and Batman all naturally get a lot of the screen time and have the best character moments but there is plenty here for other characters too one standout moment and this is a slight spoiler for the first game is a moment with wonder woman and scarecrow scarecrow makes her imagine superman and her fears when it comes to superman it's not actually superman himself but she fears the fact that she might be the one responsible for superman's 180 turn into this tyrannical murderer and i just thought that small moment it's like 10 15 seconds long did wonders for the character of Wonder Woman for this specific series. I turned to you when Lois died. You took advantage, manipulated my grief, turned me into someone I wasn't meant to be. It even made me kind of wish we got that storyline. Throw away Brainiac and just explore how a Superman that was manipulated and becoming something he wasn't would react to realizing that and just see what the outcome would be. Would he turn even more evil? Would he do a 180 again and be good again? Stuff like that would have been awesome to see in an Injustice 3, but it seems like we're never going to get that because DC are being a pain in the ass apparently. Anyway, back to the actual story. There is a lot to love here, and while most of it is pretty much perfect for me, some characters do get pushed to the side, and the whole multiverse thing being dropped from the first game, rather than trying to contact the other universe to get their Superman in, rather than relying on the evil one, would have made more sense to me, but there's probably a rule I forgot from the original that wouldn't make that possible. But either way, I think this is some of the coolest and consistent writing we've got for the DC characters in a long time, or at least in their team-up stories. The Batman, despite how long it is, is still the best DC stuff we've got for Batman in a while. Speaking of cool writing, let's talk about this cool ass gameplay. Smash that like button if you find this review helpful and maybe stick around by hitting subscribe. Join us. Join us. Join us. Injustice is Mortal Kombat but on steroids without the gore. Now I suck at these games, like I'm straight up garbage, but even I can have a lot of fun with the combat system here. All of your characters have movesets and combos, but you can mix them up with the super meter, which basically cancels out your attacks or continues them while doing far more damage at the risk of being wiped out by an enemy super with no way to respond. That little addition to the gameplay makes Injustice 2 possibly the most replayable fighting game I've ever played, but there is one more element that we will discuss.
discuss towards the end. There are so many combos and ways to fight with each individual character which can get a little overwhelming, especially when you get your ass handed to you when you first start playing, but as you learn how the combat works and the pacing of it, you can seriously feel like a badass. That being said, I can definitely see people hopping into Injustice 2 and hating it. When you think of a superhero game, you do kind of think of a power fantasy type game like Marvel Spider-Man, but that is not Injustice. Everything feels fairly balanced, you are not overpowered in any way and you will get your ass handed to you if you don't take the time to step back and figure out some of the basic moves of the characters you play as. And don't worry, that, that honestly that takes like 5 minutes max, depending on the character you're playing as to learn the basics to actually beat the story. But the point is, this is not Marvel's Spider-Man. There is difficulty here, you're not going to cakewalk it on any difficulty like Spider-Man, you're going to have to learn some combos here. You also have supers which is a really cool little cinematic moment that do a load of damage while showing off the character's abilities as well as stage knockouts. By the way, whoever came up with stage transitions years and years ago, I know they've been around for like, I don't know, two decades, three decades now, but whoever came up with it, it's such a small addition but it makes fights in these games feel so much more epic than they should in this confined space, it's so cool. You have a variety of game modes, you've got story versus the multiverse as well as a load of online modes which are pretty cool but I stayed away from them for the most part because I just suck. My favourite game modes in these fighting games are always king of the hill when it comes to online. It's always awesome watching some guy be an absolute badass watching their every move to figure out how to counter them and it, just in general it's such a cool game mode that should be in every fighting game but for some reason most of them don't have it for whatever reason I don't know but they should be in these games. The standout for me though was the story and the multiverse mode which basically adds different changes to the gameplay which can vary from random health regens or meteorites falling from the sky. It's a great game mode that offers a lot of replayability. Like I said Injustice 2 is just really replayable. These game modes really help it but the final thing I've got to talk about and it's the biggest change and the ultimate addition to solidify Injustice 2 as a super replayable fighting game is the customization. The customization is insane here. We aren't just talking about colors for outfits, we are talking about full on custom costumes that you can customize and ability choices that you can choose and are all at your disposal. Injustice 2 makes Marvel's Avengers and Marvel's Spider-Man and pretty much any other superhero game look like child's play. Every single character has customizable heads, chests, legs, boots, capes, colors and abilities. Every single character has these. It's pretty unbelievable that Neverround did this because I cannot imagine the amount of playtesting and changes needed to make a system like this balance for players. But I don't care because this customization system is simply awesome. Now I'm not saying it is balanced, like I said I avoided the online stuff but there are two modes, you can play ranked and then you can play just normal. Ranked is where they take away all the all the abilities and stuff like that that you can get from these different outfits and stuff like that to make it more fair and player is where you just get to show off your abilities and stuff like that which is pretty cool so I guess it's not balanced, it's kind of impossible to balance something like this but it's really cool to have. You unlock different pieces of gear with a bunch of different passives like more health, damage or additional abilities that completely change how you play each of these characters. It's a little overwhelming once again because there is just so much choice, it's kind of ridiculous. Obviously some bits of gear are less interesting and I imagine there's already a guide out there on how to get the best pieces of gear etc etc. Use these gears to be the ultimate superhero or some clickbait, you know. YouTube video out there. So that's the only real negative to the system as there's just no real way to figure out what is best but that's the whole point, you're meant to experiment with it but if you want to cheat, if you want to go online, they're out there, you can watch them. Other than that negative, this is my favourite superhero customization I've ever got to mess around with, it's pretty incredible. In fact, I don't think there is a superhero game out there that has this level of customization. it's ridiculous. All in all, I don't have many negatives to bring up about Injustice 2. I love these types of games despite how awful I am at them and the fact I can still have fun despite being terrible at them should tell you enough. I definitely recommend picking Injustice 2 up especially right now since it's on sale for like £11, like $15 and that's the Legendary Edition by the way so you get all the DLC. I didn't get that version but you get all the DLC, all the, all the DLC characters it's pretty cheap and it's a good deal. It's also coming to PlayStation Plus as I've just found out. So today I'm guessing or a couple days from now it will be on PlayStation Plus so you could wait. But you know it's still £11 you know you could get it forever. I I'd personally buy it personally but that's just me. 
Injustice 2 is a fantastic game and you should absolutely buy it if you don't want to pay for subscription services. Thank you for watching.